Hello out there in cryptocurrency land. Welcome to Real Crypto. Thank you for joining me again today. So our nice little inverted head and shoulders here so far is playing out pretty nicely. We have a nicely formed left shoulder, nicely formed head, nicely formed right shoulder. Actually not much happening here. Um, there's been a lot of talk through this whole little base about Bitcoin being bearish, about the volume in Bitcoin. And I've actually even kind of fed into that conversation and I don't quite know why. It's been, this is this was my theory first, if you remember. Um, if you guys caught this video right after I put it out, I don't think anyone else was even talking about this, this pattern. I actually pointed this pattern out right here, like just before, just after this top was formed, that this could have a potential inverted head and shoulders pattern. And it's actually playing out, so I don't know why I was ever bearish. And to be quite real with you, ladies and gentlemen, I think I basically fudded myself out of some money on this run. I think that's exactly what I did and I feel like crap about that. So I'm going to have to go back and review the charts and rewrite a couple of rules at least for cryptocurrencies for me. So that's keeping it real with you guys. All right. So what happens from here? Well, first of all, we're testing this neckline and we've seen a little bit of resistance so far, which is to be expected. We have seen heavy resistance so far over 11,000, only a couple of closes barely over 11,000 over here. Mostly we've been selling off from the 11,000 level. So if we dig down to the two hour chart, if we dig down to the two hour chart, all this volume that a lot of people have been talking about, a light volume rise um, is true. The rises is, is kind of in lighter volume, but at the same time, ever since we broke, we broke out of this declining wedge right here, this declining wedge, um, the market behavior has shifted. If you notice on the left side here, we have a lot of red and then we have kind of a little plateau of volume here and to the right side, it's been a lot of green volume. Now to the bears perspective or even not even the bears perspective, but if, if you've been skeptical of this run up kind of like I've been, then what you've been seeing here is all this flurry of red volume and selling candles and topping candles. Okay. But so far, we've proceeded with higher highs and higher lows. So you do have to go with the trend. You do have to go with the trend. Like here's a nice uh, spiky red candle. Um, this green candle is actually a selling candle. If you notice, there's a huge wick up there. There's been quite a bit of selling. There's a big red candle here. This green candle is probably 50-50. And then you've got this green candle put in a top. So. There's been quite a bit of selling here. And like I said, um, like I said, it's been bullish and I've cost myself some money throughout this move here. But right here, we just touched this neckline. We, we just touched this neckline. Um, and the volume so far on this two hour candle, we're about three quarters way through the, the two hour period with 27 minutes left in this candle. Volume is equal to the previous candle. So there is a little bit of selling here, but I've been watching this and a majority of this is buying volume. Ideally, we would like this to close higher, but this is just a two hour bar. Let's get back to the daily. Now, taking a longer term perspective, you do want to live on the daily. Um, you do want to live on the daily. I've been living too much in the lower term time frames, which has kind of been, I think, poisoning my thought process a little bit. Now on the daily here, we have a long way to go. We're only three and a half hours into the day. It's 3.33 UTC. And I like to time it in UTC because that's what these bars are based off of the UTC time. If we can get this volume about approximately 50% above average volume in Bitcoin here, and we can close above this neckline, then I think we have uh, pretty much a confirmed breakout from this inverted head and shoulders pattern. And albeit probably a very well confirmed negation of the bear market. Okay. I don't think we're there yet. We don't we really don't have a breakout of any kind yet. So there is a possibility that we do um, maybe go up a little higher and then go sideways and roll over if we don't get increased volume, increased buying in Bitcoin. Okay. We need to get no selling, which means that the buyers can take it higher or we get a lot of buyers, which would be more ideal because there would be more pressure to the move. Now, like I said, above 11,000 has been really tough to get above. It's been, it's been kind of a fighting zone. So I'm viewing between 11,000 and 12,000, kind of the demilitarized zone for Bitcoin. You don't generally want to go into that area too heavy. 
you don't want to go there too heavy. That being said, that's right where this neckline lives. So if you don't like risk, go find a different profession. Trading is all about risk. It's risk versus reward, and it's a constantly evolving ratio and a constantly evolving battle. Um, that being said, I want to talk about this trend line here. I want to talk about this trend line, the 18,000 target, and kind of what that means. So I know most of you are tuning out, but stay with me for this. This will be pretty good. Okay. So the head and shoulders in Bitcoin over here at 20,000, um, the actual implied downside target was $6,000. It was $6,000. The problem here is that it actually took quite a long time to get there. It took 46 days for this inverted head and shoulders after it broke the neckline to play out. That is completely out of proportion with what a, a typical head and shoulders will do. There's no hard rules about how long it takes, but if you've been involved with trading, um, even though we knew about this head and shoulders, we kind of forgot about it. We kind of forgot about it once we started really falling off because um, just because of time, time in the market decays everything to the upside and the downside. T time, time heals all wounds. That is also true in the markets. So anyway, this took about 46 days from when it broke the trend line to hit this low over here. And if, if you ride this trend line to the upside, it's going to take you about 42 days to hit 18,000. Oh, that's 19,000. Oh, I'm sorry, that's 69 days from the bottom, not the break of the neckline. My bad, wrong comparison. So right there, 44 bars to Bitcoin 18,000, and that will happen on April 16th. There you go. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, yeah, so 18,000, about, about the same amount of time. And that's really interesting if we get... If that would happen, if we would get basically a nice V-shaped, at least on the time axis, at least on the time axis, um, about when it broke the neckline. So as you can see here, Bitcoin can do some kind of wild and crazy things. We can break to the upside, come all the way back down. And as you see here, we broke down really quickly, came all the way back up, tested the neckline again, came all the way back up, tested and broke the neckline, came all the way back up. I mean, it was a constant battle around this neckline. I hope that doesn't happen in this particular scenario. The chart pattern looks a lot more normal than this head and shoulders. This is, there's some people that would argue this is not a head and shoulders, and I'm gonna argue back, but I'm not gonna, you know, I can't really blame them for saying this isn't a head and shoulders. Although it is, um, if you want to have a technical argument, it's my argument's gonna be weak. Okay, that's all I got to say, but it did play out in the end. This is a more normalized head and shoulders pattern, although it's still a little weird. But as you can see, this time axis thing here could play out. And if it does, fantastic. Now, what happens if this trend line gets broken? That is something we also need to think about because in trading, we should really hopefully plan for all scenarios. Now, you don't want to be scared out of a trade, but at the same time, you just want to be prepared. You can't think this is going straight to 18,000 and it fails on you and you're scrambling thinking about what to do. You have to have some kind of a plan in place. You have to think about a few different possibilities, bullish and bearish. So if we come down and test this trend line, that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. Okay, but if we come down and negate it uh, quite harshly, number one, if we're a little further on in the rise, like say we get up to 12, 5, 13,000, and we're just kind of marching and we're up here, you know, maybe a week or so, and then we come down and crash through here, testing this neckline would be perfectly normal, albeit scary for a lot of traders. It would be normal behavior to test a neckline. Ideally, you would like a very quick test, and ideally, you could test both of these at the same time. That would be super duper. But you know, I don't think that's in the cards. The market never likes to do nice things for you. The market does bad things generally. Um, but yeah, overall, a test of the neckline would be extraordinarily normal, extraordinarily normal. So a test of the neckline is not a bad thing. If we start selling off, it could be a little scary. Volume could be a little high. But what happens is the sellers will, will sell high. And as we get back towards the neckline, they will reduce their selling because they don't want to sell at a lower price, okay? They want those higher prices. So they'll start to sell at little clips and that's really what causes the pullbacks in the market. 
but as we get higher, you'll see some of those pullbacks, and hopefully they will be supported either by this neckline or by this trend line. Both would be bullish. Um, a break of this neckline could be pretty bad, um, but we'll have to talk about that when that happens. And we'll see how profitable you are in your Bitcoin. But neckline testing, um, very positive for Bitcoin. Ne neckline testing, very positive for Bitcoin. The decline in the volume here, which I have a trend line here, if you've been wondering what this is, this is a trend line about the declining volume in the right side of the shoulder that is actually also positive. That is positive. You know, red or green, take it away. You know, remove the color from the situation and a declining volume and a sell-off like this, especially with an appreciation in price, is a positive. So we pretty much have all positive signs for Bitcoin. I don't see too much negativity here. The negativity that, that you see here is not in the charts. It's in a possible future. So don't let yourself FUD out of a position because you're going to FOMO back into it later. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Thank you for joining me today, and I will see you guys next time.